So what would happen if Donald Trump went out on Fifth Avenue and shot someone during the presidential campaign? He said that he could do that and his supporters would still vote for him. And that might be true about his supporters, but what is also true is that the NYPD would immediately either shoot and kill Donald Trump on the spot or arrest him and charge him with murder. Today, Harvard Law School professor Lawrence Tribe tweeted, if Trump shot someone, he'd be indicted in a New York minute. Nothing in the Constitution prevents his indictment for directing a criminal conspiracy to steal the presidency. Certainly not a Justice Department policy. Joining our discussion now, Lawrence Tribe, Harvard Law professor and constitutional scholar. He is also the co-author of To End a Presidency, The Power of Impeachment. Professor Tribe, thank you very much for joining us tonight. Uh, you, you've published an op-ed piece in the Boston Globe about uh, the ability to indict the president. How do you see this? It seems to me that the only argument against indicting the president is an assumed policy on the part of the Justice Department that says he's too busy and therefore we should wait. Now that's not a very convincing argument. If he's got time to sit for a Senate impeachment trial, he's got time to sit in an ordinary criminal courtroom. Besides, it's not a binding policy and what has occurred to me is it couldn't be a binding policy. It would be unconstitutional to immunize a president who has committed a serious crime, especially a crime of fraudulently obtaining the presidential power, and to immunize him until he leaves office. And the reason is quite simple, although nobody seems to have made the point. People worry about Trump abusing the power of the pardon. But there is another way the pardon power enters the picture. It's the way Gerald Ford pardoned Richard Nixon. Now, the framers were absolutely clear that because a president who was convicted by the Senate of impeachable offenses cannot be punished, he can just be expelled from office. But there he sits with all his ill-gotten gains, the emoluments from Saudi Arabia, Russia, every place, and he gets to keep it all, even though in the meantime he's done a lot of harm to the country. That's not what they had in mind. They specifically said in Article 1, that because the president can't be punished by the Senate, he has to remain liable to trial and punishment afterwards. Now, how could that work if the president and the vice president, as part of a ticket, the way it's been ever since 1804, they've run together, if they get into office together, the president abuses his power, and then if he either leaves under threat of impeachment or resigns for some other reason, or is actually convicted, all he does on the way out is arrange with Pence, look, why don't you get the national nightmare over with and pardon me? And Pence says, you're pardoned. And then he can never be held to account. And those who say, well, of course, the president isn't above the law. He isn't outside the law. He's not a king. He's not a monarch. He's not a two-bit dictator. We'll get him eventually. But eventually is never if the scenario works out the way it would obviously do. Now, I'm not saying there's necessarily a corrupt bargain between Pence and Trump, but no president is going to pick a vice president who isn't at least likely to give him a get-out-of-jail-free card on his way out the door. And that means that the only way the framers design to hold everyone accountable to the law can be made to work is not having a policy against indicting and trying a sitting president. If the president were indicted and openly indicted while he's still president, there's no way Pence would get away with pardoning him after that. The only reason that Ford could get away with pardoning Nixon without himself being impeached and removed for abuse of power is that Nixon had not been indicted of any crime. But in this case, we have what looks like a looming indictment of a serious felony that was directed and coordinated by the guy who wanted to be president in, in order to help him become president. 
seems to me that all those people who've said that a sitting president cannot be indicted will have to reconsider in light of this serious constitutional argument. You know, I, I've always believed the president uh, can be indicted simply because if the founders uh, wanted otherwise, it'd be the easiest possible sentence to insert in the Constitution, to simply say that the president cannot be indicted. But it does seem to me that on the impeachment clause in the Constitution, there is the possible implication uh, of this because it says that after the president is uh, impeached and removed from office, uh, the president can then be indicted. Uh, that would be an implication, uh, possibly, that the president should not be indicted while a sitting president. Do you think that, you don't seem to think that is a strong enough implication in the Constitution, if it is one? I think it is not a strong implication. On the contrary, it gets things upside down. The language that you're talking about, Lawrence, of Article One says that the judgment in an impeachment case shall not extend further than removal from office and possible disqualification, but the person convicted shall nevertheless be liable and subject to indictment, judgment, and punishment according to law. That says he shall be liable. And if he could be pardoned easily by the person who assumed the presidency without ever being elected by virtue of being the vice president could simply wipe that away, then he would not be liable to punishment. The ordinary sequence might well be to impeach and remove first. But if a president has committed a crime in order to get to office, and has combined the office and his business interests in a way that might be inimical to the United States in order to enrich himself and his family, then the only way to carry out the Constitution's design without making the pardon power and the guaranteed liability to criminal punishment clash with one another is to remain open to the possibility of indicting and trying the president while he is in office. And it seems to me that that's the only coherent way to read the Constitution and to understand its history. Because the framers said they were concerned about the corrupt acquisition of presidential power. The incentives would be all the wrong way if a president could bribe electors or hide things from the voters in order to become president and then be guaranteed that he would never serve a day in jail. Harvard Law Professor Lawrence Tribe, an honor to have you with us once again. Thank you very much for Thank explaining you. that to us tonight. Really appreciate it. Thanks for checking out our YouTube channel. Subscribe by clicking on the button below for more from The Last Word and the rest of MSNBC.